Hockenberry, and welcome to JHPS Digital Learning Live. Uh, I'm the Zone 3 Digital Innovation Leader, and I am joined today by uh, several people on our chat. I've got uh, Shade Graves, who is the Zone 1 Instructional Digital Innovation Leader. Hello, Shade. Hi, Ben. Matt Bolka, who's our High School Digital Innovation Leader Instructional. He's hanging out there in the chat as well. Hey, Matt. Hey, how's it going? Hey, Matt, how's it going? And then we've got Steve Durham, my partner, the technical lead in Zone 3. He's hanging out in the chat as well. Hello, everybody. And then I've also got our middle school instructional digital innovation lead, uh, Elaine Abernathy, hanging out there too. So very good. And today's show is really cool. We've got Sheridan Barnett, the multi-talented Sheridan Barnett, uh, Sher uh, Sheridan Barnett, who is the principal at Height Elementary, uh, children's uh, book author, I believe, too, uh, and digital leader. She's talking about how she leads her team at Height Elementary. Height, home of the Junkyard Hawks, if you're not familiar. Uh, amazing stuff going on there at Height. So if you want to take over, Sheridan, and just tell us how you're leading your team, uh, we'd love to hear it. Okay, great. Thank you for that introduction. A couple of surprises as you slid in there. <laughs> but thank you. Um, so one thing that I am constantly doing, and I'll get into a little bit more of this when I talk later in the slides with my whole why am I doing this? And um, those of you who have ever been in school administration or probably just in the school in general right now with the current reality, my mind is constantly racing, trying to find solutions to increase efficiency with monitoring data and providing documented evidence of our systems and maintaining fidelity of our purpose and why we are here. And that's to help educate these little people from nine to 345 and it's in this binary system of all of this compliance and also functionality that still allows us to do that. So um, I've found the current model that I'm gonna share with you guys today has not only done that, but it has also increased time for collaborative conversations, as we know is paramount to helping teams work effectively together for the good of the whole and for helping the, the kids learn and grow and it also has created a system of consistency and alignment through my PLCs and um, through my administration team and it also allows staff to be held accountable both individually and collectively and for their growth and professional learning so um, there's a lot of transparency caveats in there as well but I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and start my slides so I can show you some of the tools that I use. And I've done this presentation on a much smaller scale before, and I know it's overwhelming because I, I kind of bombard with a lot of tools, but just know that my contact information is in there, and if there's anything that anybody wants to share or use or needs information on, I'm happy to have follow-up conversations. So my whole philosophy, vision, and theory behind this was there, and, and I still feel that there's a lot of streamlining that needs to be done district-wide, but for me here at Height Elementary, I wanted to create a one-stop shop for all the information that staff needs. And um, that, that helps eliminate miscommunication, it helps eliminate where's this, did you send it in an email, was it in an attachment, where is it in the mail room, all of that business. So I created this team site using the Google site, and uh, it has a thousand different things on it, the whole why. And what I've created here in the system has helped save me a lot of time and energy with information and confusion and miscommunication. It, stream, it has streamlined communications. I send out one school-wide email a week on Friday with my Friday flash and my newsletter, and that's it. Otherwise, I am not bombarding my teachers with emails because as a school administrator, I know how it feels to get a thousand emails a day with actionable items, with information, with, a, and you just can't process it. So I put it all in one newsletter and then I archive that newsletter on the website so they can see it. I also share all things as the and uh, that thing, transparency. And like I said before, it has empowered teachers to start holding themselves and each other accountable for a lot of the collaborative and shared work that we do here. And I've, helped, I've really empowered our ILT to begin creating leaders within their teams and not just disseminators of information. 
So the biggest time savers that you're going to find, and I'm going to go through, and if I have time, as many of them as I can, were the calendar, sharing my Google calendar and how I align that and make sure that if a date gets changed, it's all up to date and no one is missed out on the information. The newsletters, all of our office forms now are digital. Our SPDM agendas and policies, that has been a huge time saver. Digital sign-ins, screencastifies that I create to teach teachers how to do certain things with technology um, that's related to instruction and also just the daily operations of the building. So I don't have to take up time at a staff meeting to show them. They can go back. And as Heather Worrell always says, the power of pause and watch those videos as many times as they need. And then paperless organization. So that is huge because we don't have a lot of space here to store all of those things that have to be archived. So I've created a paperless form for that. Um, the next thing, the biggest impact, well, how is this impact, how has this impacted our operations and our instruction within this building? We have a streamlined, like I said, PLC protocol and agenda system. An administrator sits on each one of the PLC, so we help calibrate that information and make sure that we are consistent across all grade levels for vertical alignment there. Uh, we have an admin PLC shared drive where we create our agendas and add to it any data and the information that we need to um, assimilate for our PLC. I have surveys that gets constant feedback on my performance and growth as well as other things that are connected to our CSIP and my growth plan. I, have, um, I get immediate feedback when we do walkthroughs in the building to teachers that have a walkthrough tool that I created that will auto-generate an email and send a PDF of the data so the teacher has immediate feedback and then we have um, cumulative feedback from when we hold our coaching sessions. And then you'll see during some of my staff meeting agendas that it has really contributed a lot to meaningful and individualized staff meeting agendas where I'm not having to go over calendar dates. I'm not having to go over procedural things because it's all in one place. They know where it is and it's streamlined. <clears throat> so now I'm going to go ahead and lead you to the team site. You know, just thinking about like something super easy to make digital is just walking into a building and having to sign in. Uh, schools that have that digital sign in, I mean, mm -hmm. every school should do that. Every school should have people sign in on the computer, not not sign that piece of paper. Yes, and I'll uh, I'll explain a little bit of that on how that has had a huge impact and a time saver on us when we have our attendance meetings. And when, and to be quite honest, as a school administrator, when parents went to argue about that they weren't late or they were there on time and the door shouldn't have been closed, and expert, I, mean, I know that doesn't happen anywhere else in the district, but sometimes it happens here at Height. And so here, it's, it's not an opinion. It's not somebody's clock is wrong, they sign in, and as soon as they sign in, it's time stamped. Yeah, and so, and then it has really helped with the attendance and data piece of it in terms of um, our attendance clerk, their procedure is they have to keep all of those records. So if we have a big event and there's a thousand people signing in for, let's say, fifth grade ceremony or a holiday party or something that happens during the school day, well, that could be up to 10 pages of visitor sign-in logs. Yeah. Now it's all in a digital form and now I don't have to have a hundred paper boxes sitting back in a storage area to archive all of our data and information. So it, it truly is um, streamlining the process for visitor sign-in, for student sign-in and out, and it helps us um, locate the information much more quickly than having to thumb through a, a paper file and find on whatever day who came in to sign their kid out kind of thing. Yeah, it helps you plan for next year. Yep. We had this many visitors this year, uh, plan for next year, so that's, that's great. Exactly, and then for the um, for the staff sign-in, we have that as well, digital on a form, and then that helps our payroll, our secretary, manage that payroll clerk, because that information has to be archived for seven years, and we have to keep all of those records. So it's kind of streamlined and narrowed down the amount of paper that we are forced to maintain here. And that helps with our storage, so it's not taking up so much space. But um, moving on to the site here, um, I'm going to show you. I've, it's really simple. It's just a, a plain old classic Google site. 
and I have it organized into a home page and then these four sub pages. And as I had said previously on my slide, one of the biggest time savers is the calendar. So I'll show you um, what that looks like here. So they have uh, on the site, and we'll look here in a minute, the staff calendar. And it is just my Google calendar that I manage. And if anyone wants to plan a field trip or an after school activity or an extracurricular activity, I created a screencastify to show them how to do that. And they create an event in their calendar and send the invite to me. And then once I get the invite, I can accept the invite and add it to the school calendar and quickly just copy it to the family calendar as well. And everybody's informed. And then what that helps me with making sure communication is act accurate is if they change the daily or if they're sick and they have to cancel a junkyard hawks rehearsal or a field trip gets canceled, that's not on me to have to go into the calendar and do that. That is that sponsor, that teacher, that office staff member, whoever scheduled that event, if that date and time changes, they go in and change it and it automatically updates on the school-wide and the family calendar. So that has helped streamline and empower them to make decisions on the events and the extracurricular activities that they plan. So that's right here and I just embedded it in the site. Um, my newsletters, I use the smaller for it, but my Friday Flash is my um, staff newsletter that I send out every Friday. And so this is just a simple Google Doc and I link up every newsletter. So if they want to go back and see last year what we were doing on September 14th, they can click on that link and go to the newsletter and see what was going on. So um, I'll just click on this one here just to show you quickly the, the flow of my newsletter. but. This is what it's like, and I have it organized um, to up this week, what's the calendar situation there, and then if I have an updated screen classify, then I link it here, and I give them a little blurb about what it's about and how it can be helpful or relevant to them. And so they can click on that there. Those are also ar archived on the Google site. Then I have a to be completed section, and I link all of that information up there. And then I have a section uh, that relates to what's going on in the district. So they can see the purpose and the why of the decisions that are being made here at Hype. So, and the SBDM section. So those are the main sections here in my newsletter. And how this saves time is every week, I just make a copy and duplicate this newsletter. And I share it with my whole administration team, my secretary, my bookkeeper. So I'm not the hoarder of all the information. If they, if my FRC wants to put something in the newsletter, then they can link it up to the newsletter. If my um, office staff, my attendance clerk is having an issue or someone in the cafeteria is having an issue with schedules or calendars, there's a notes from the office section and they just go in and they link up whatever they need to link up. And it saves me a tremendous amount of time each week having to recreate and assimilate and collect all of the information from all of the stakeholders that need to communicate in the newsletter. And this, as I said earlier, really helps teachers because I only send one email out, one whole staff email out a week, and it's this. So we're not sending out willy-nilly on Tuesday, oh, I forgot to tell you about the assembly that we're having, or on Thursday there's a fire drill. There's none of that. It's all here in the Friday Flash, and I made it very clear to all staff members that it is their professional responsibility to read it because I am not spending staff meeting time communicating what I've already communicated in the Friday Flash. So that increases the collaborative time that we can have at a staff meeting. So that is the calendar newsletters, and then I'm going to slide through here, um, skipping over office forms for a moment to show you my SVDM agendas and um, what how this has streamlined this process is I share this folder with everyone on SVDM <clears throat> but I also link up the agendas in the Friday Flash so if anyone wants to know what policy decisions have been made and how we made them they can get in here and look at the agenda so um, I'll just show you this and how this is streamlined again I can just make a copy of the agenda, fill in whatever needs to be filled in for that month, and uh, it goes pretty smoothly that I don't have to <clears throat> um, recreate the agenda and the items every week. I link up the approval of the minutes, and then here's been a huge time saver for me too. I created a list 
of every single one of our SBDM policies, and I linked them up here. So they are all <clears throat> on Google Docs, and as I'm going through the agenda, if we're going to update our dress code policy, I just simply have to click here. It's here, and we can update it uh, live time and send that on through to Dr. Stenton and the SBDM department, and I don't have to make a thousand different copies. I don't have to get a million different folders together, and I don't have to send uh, hard copies over to the office. I can send her my digital link to my agenda that has all of the policies and connections to it. So that's uh, really streamlined that process as well. Um, now I'm going to move on to, <clears throat> we've already talked about the digital sign-ins and screencast by, so I'm going to skip over those and move on to the um, the next page here and go to my office forms page. So anything that you think that a teacher or a staff member would need to complete on paper, it is here. And it's linked up in these uh, categories. So if they have things that they need to contact our bookkeeper for to order certain things or plan field trips, it's all right here. And then if they want to make a referral to our counselor or MTSS teacher, um, there. It's all right there. And then everything else. So if they want to request something on Screencastify, they want to ask how do you create uh, an assignment in Google Classroom and push it out to all of your teachers, that's right there as well. So um, it's all here. One of the things that I've discussed before and people have appreciated is the student disciplinary and referral. And um, so that is digital here. And how that works is <clears throat> it's on this, this form, this Google Doc, and they go, it's on the site, as you see, so they don't have to keep a file of them in their room. If they have a disciplinary issue, they need to complete this referral, they go to the site, they make a copy, they fill all of this information out on the top here, and then they check what uh, action that they took and then they sign it here with their digital signature. I created a screencastify showing them how to create a digital signature. And then all they have to do is simply click share and they share it with me, with my assistant principal, my counselor, and maybe another teacher if that's relevant, an ECE teacher that needs to see it. And immediately we get that information. So they don't have to wait till their planning time to send us um, the referral, if it's something that we need immediately, we can see it from our phones, from our iPads, from our um, office computers. We can see that a referral has been submitted immediately, and then we can coordinate who's going to handle that situation. So that has helped not only with the maintaining of records and keeping a digital list of the referrals and, and how many referrals we have on st certain students, but it also has streamlined and made a really timely um, situation for us to be able to respond to it. So we very rarely, unless something happens at the very end of the day at 3.40, 3.45, and there's a referral that needs to be submitted at that time, we rarely have a day where the referral is not sent home immediately with that child, and we can even send this electronically after we contact the parent if they want to. Mm -hmm. So um, that has helped streamline all of that information um, as well. So I'm, I mean, I could go over all of these things, but I don't want to bore everyone with every mm -hmm. single one of my forms. Well, you've got, here, you've got the, um, uh, student accident report on there. So it's like I think back to uh, my days of subbing uh, PE, having to drop those little green cards so every time I get hurt. Uh, so like that student accident report is even digital. That's awesome. Yes, yes. That is all digital and uh, it helps, like I said, it really helps us because right now uh, we are in the age of documentation and accountability and proving that we did something. And so this helps streamline that process that there's no question. I just have to go into the forums. I have to search a certain name, a date, filter it out, whatever, and I can find exactly who submitted what, on what day, who signed off on it, and who was uh, involved. And that makes it really easy to get information to parents or assistant superintendents or anyone that needs that information. It's all very transparent and very easily accessed. Um, the field trip planning forms, that is just here in a folder for um, teachers, and it has a form here um, 
Let me see. Here it is. No, it's this. The field trip activity check request. So this takes out any any possibility or a lot of possibility for human error in calculating mm -hmm. how many um, what what the check amount needs to be made for a field trip. So they just go in here and it's formulated. They have three adults. The adults, uh, it's eight dollars. Then it calculates it for you, and then they go through all the classes and it gives a a check grand total here. So they complete this and they share it with our bookkeeper. So then she knows that she has a check that needs to be made for a certain amount for this date. And it kind of streamlines that communication as well. And there's a lot of stuff in that field trip planning uh, folder there that people can dig into if they needed to, but I'm not going to bore everybody with that. Um, so those have been the biggest time savers for me. And then now I'm going to take a step back here to our PLC and planning tools page because this is where the impact happens. And uh, one thing that has saved a lot of communication. Sheridan, I do have a question real quick. And uh, so where I was uh, with the calendar and the master schedule is we, this is our master schedule and I'm not showing you this for the technical situation, but we also have our library checkout here. And one thing that has created a streamlined way of communicating is we put all of our extracurricular programs on here and the days that they meet and time. And I share this with parents as well. So there, you know, for me personally, at the end of the day, when I'm trying to make announcements, I can't keep straight who's doing what and what program is coming here on a Wednesday versus a Thursday. So it's all right here. And our office staff has it up front. So if a parent calls and says, if our Junkyard Hawks meeting this Thursday, or when does fencing happen, it's all right here mm -hmm. in one document. So it's all on separate tabs on one document. And then we also even have our intervention schedule there too. So um, any schedule that's related to the daily routine of the school is on one document here in our master schedule. Mm -hmm. So that's helped streamline communication as well. Uh, let's see, what else is worth sharing here? Um, PLG, PLC agenda, um, there's, I put the framework, the link to that on here, and we discussed that at leadership team retreat over the summer, and we are using that religiously when we go to PLCs. But here's the protocol that I created. You have to use the, the mandatory agenda template, but then the protocol where the meat of the work happens is here. And I created this in alignment with the six systems, as you see the PLC expectations and PLC uh, purpose up there, that came directly from the framework and the six systems. And then they have um, a choice down here for their drop down menu for their agenda items. These two up here are mandatory, that they, they will be discussed at each meeting, the equity one and progress on their goals. But then these are flexible down here. So they can go in and through a drop down if they're creating formal assessments, they can click on that there, put their notes there. And then I even linked up a screencastify here to show them how to link documents in the PLC protocol, because I know that that's something that not everybody is well versed on is linking documents in an Excel file in a sheet. So I had that screencastify right there if they need that support. And then what my ILT team asked for or communicated was, well, how are we going to keep up week to week from uh, all of this? So I went ahead and I copied the same template for all 36 weeks of the school year. So at the end of the school year for every PLC, they have one document and one sheet that will, that has evidence of all of their work that they have completed during PLCs in one document. And that has been a huge time saver for them. And it also is going to be nice for them when they start planning again for next year in the summer for planning out their first six or first nine weeks of school, they can go back and access what lessons they created, their backward design unit planning templates, Anything PLC related, it's all in one document. So that has been a huge time saver and has had big impact on how our PLCs function from week to week. Mm -hmm. 
staff meeting agendas is one that I said had a big impact. So I will show a few meetings and our meeting agendas that we use. Sharon, and I'm just going to make a, a quick question. Yeah. So uh, you had said earlier that the uh, the staff had kind of, some of them had kind of gotten a little confused and revolted just a little bit, but uh, it's that paradigm shift even from the Google Docs being live to now they're no longer having to uh, go back to that one concrete board and check uh, the right. calendar. And so for those that are out there thinking, oh, I don't know, they're not going to want to do this. They're not, it's just, it's just, it's a lot of uh, work in the forefront, but then you reap that benefit through. So now your time is just saved and able to get into those classrooms a lot. Right, a lot and, and I will say also with this and me using these tools and creating screencastifies, it's, it served as a model for mm -hmm. them on how to teach digitally within the classroom. Yeah. Because before we went to this model, I had very few teachers who were really using the Chromebooks for deeper learning mm -hmm. and for student backpack quality work. And I had very few students who were using Google Classroom. Well, now almost all of, well, I'm not going to say almost, all of my teachers at least have a Google Classroom that they use. Now, kindergarten, not as much, but I would say my second through fifth grade and even a couple of my first grade, they use Google Classroom religiously for assignments. And when I'm going in doing walkthroughs, students are sitting in a workshop model in a small group with Chromebooks out. One of the most amazing things that I saw last year, and I bragged about the teacher for days about it, was she had a group of first graders that were creating a survey, a real Google form <laughs> survey, to send to their classmates so that they could communicate to the parents what kind of cupcakes that they wanted at their uh, celebration yeah. party that the PTA was hosting. And I thought, wow, what a great functional mm -hmm. tool for them to use. And newsflash and it was pretty big for my fifth grade teachers to hear these kids are six and it was their mm -hmm. idea and they were generating the form and they were coming up with the questions and they learned how to share it with their their classmates through google classroom so their classmates could take the survey mm -hmm. and then communicate it to the parent liaison about what cupcakes they wanted and that's, that's pretty amazing that's awesome way to yeah. go so that has been a big a big paradigm shift from mm -hmm. me being digital with my leadership that it's not only what they have to do to complete tasks within their job description, but they're also transferring it over into the instructional model in the classroom. And, mm -hmm. you know, we can put our heads in the sand all we want, and but kids have to know how to access, how to navigate, and how to use technology in an effective way in order to communicate and be part of our current society. So they're teaching that now, whereas before it was kind of a big scary thing. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, thank you for bringing that up. Here is the agenda that I use for staff meetings and I model for them. I have one staff meeting a month and it is a 90 minute staff meeting. So I model what we ask of them with the lesson frame you can see here, and then it's customized. And so they have here, um, they go in rotating groups where they're going to go and what session they're going to see. And they have it all right there in that rotating schedule. But then I link up any documents and information that they need here. Uh, this is not a very good example now that I see that I don't have a lot of things in here. But typically when we have presenters that have presentations going on that are in a Google Drive, they will link them up here so that they have access to those prior to the meeting and can look at them and again have that power of pause. The other thing that is has been a huge time saver and also had a lot of impact is I have my sign in and exit slip on every agenda. So at the end of the staff meeting, they this is their sign in so I can document who attended, especially for those mandated things. And in this case, it was suicide prevention. So I have a, a list of people who actually attended and it's digital. I don't have to go through and look for a sign-in sheet to pull that up. And then they list their takeaway here. 
And how this is helpful for me is it gives me feedback when I go in and look at the results. I can see what comments they've made, what questions they've had, if they want follow up on any type of um, training or professional development or presentation that was presented during the staff meeting. So it helps me customize for the next staff meeting and really individualize conversations and agendas for admin PLCs, for grade level PLCs, and for staff meetings. And it has allowed for more collaborative conversations during staff meetings because, uh, you know, previously I was really just going over and communicating again what was already in the newsletter. And that is not what, what we're doing anymore in that regard. Sheridan, I think you have uh, definitely shared tons of, and just the fact that you um, are taking this paradigm shift to the max, um, and that really you've taken the, the Google tools and you have implemented them in each part that you needed to do in um, leading the school and making sure that your teachers were all in the know, breaking down those silos and uh, making sure that the communication and simplifying it and making it live which is huge, it's huge. So uh, this is wonderful and that I love your, your central hub is a Google site. So it's mm -hmm. very, very simple to make, uh, but then you can make it more complex as you get more advanced. So it's just awesome, it's awesome. Now, I just wanted to say one last thing. So I created the digital hub for staff last year and this year I rolled it out for families and parents. And so it's kind of the similar model um, the calendar again is here. They have their archives of all the family newsletters. They have their list of policies. They have uh, the master schedule there if they need to know anything. And then I went almost completely paperless for first day folder forms. There were some things that needed to be sent out as per district policy. Um, so I did send out hard copies of that, but otherwise they can, act, and they can even access the ones that we had to send home hard copy here in the first day folder forms. I've linked up curriculum resources, so parents who are interested in looking at the academic standards and the, um, the curriculum department and their frameworks that we follow are there. And then we also have the office forms site here. And it's still a work in progress, but it has all of the forms that are not in the first day folder that they might need to access throughout the year and then we are working right now with ILT for them to all create their own team websites that I can move up and that will be the third sub page there so we are transitioning to digital forms and information for parents as well and we do send out a survey at the beginning of the year so if there are parents that do not have access to technology or would prefer it a written um, or a paper newsletter and paper information, we do have those students on file and we do send those home weekly when we need to. But most of our forms are now digital and it helps again with streamlining all of that information and maintaining those records. So that is a quick and dirty run through of a lot of different tools that I've created to help streamline and make sure that staff meetings and PLC meetings are truly getting to our why and the need of the work and collaborative work. But I'm happy if anybody checks out the site and needs any additional information, um, there's my contact information. I love it, I love it. Sheridan, thank you so much for your leadership in our district and uh, willing to share and make sure that uh, others can uh, see, take a sneak peek and then take your lead as well. So uh, thank you again for this wonderful show and you can receive on-demand video support by subscribing to this YouTube channel, jcpsdigitallearning.com. And all you have to do is click that red subscribe button and that'll give you notifications as well as uh, information for upcoming episodes or episodes that you or a, um, another teacher that you work with or principal uh, could use. Now you can also keep up to date with us on the latest episodes by following the hashtag on Twitter, JCPSIT3, or even the handle hashtag JCPSIT3. So Sheridan, without further ado, thank you again, and we will see you soon. Okay, thank you. Have a great day. Bye.